Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about our own gravitational field, our own gravity. In other words, we're going to discuss the idea of humans having gravity and we're going to find out if you and I could actually have some kind of a tiny object becoming our own moon. Now, um, the answer to this question is actually something I've discussed before, but I wanted to do this in a little bit more detail um, and specifically talk about humans and human gravity. So in other words, you know, how much gravity do we actually have? So at some point in the future, I'm sure if we become um, in interplanetary species, this will probably happen. There is going to be at least one person stuck somewhere in space with no ability to communicate with anyone and just kind of sort of floating there. So maybe you will be that person, hopefully not, but you never know. Um, so what if this person got really bored? I mean, you're kind of stuck. You're just waiting to be rescued or maybe just uh, waiting out your last days. What do you do? Well, you could maybe create your own moon for entertainment. And uh, that's, of course, because just like everything else in the universe, everything with mass has gravity. But how much gravity do we actually have? How much gravity is inside of you? Now, to answer this question, we could do um, a few calculations and a few formulas, but I think the best example I can give you is to actually just imagine something visually. So um, I couldn't unfortunately use a human being, so instead I used a pumpkin, because Universe Sandbox doesn't still have human beings in it. I really hope they add a model for a simple astronaut one day, but for now we have to deal with pumpkins. Now this is actually a pretty big pumpkin, it's about 100 kilograms. But that's actually far from the record pumpkin in the world. This is totally off topic, but the largest pumpkin ever was actually farmed uh, back in September of 2018, I believe. And it was humongous. I do have a picture of it somewhere. Here it is actually. This is about 2,500 pounds or about 1,100 kilograms in weight. So that is a huge pumpkin. Not really comparable to the one I have here, which is only 100 kilograms. And this pumpkin is going to represent a human, which is why I called it a human. And so, as you can probably imagine, and if you know enough about gravitational attraction and also masses, um, we can technically place a moon around it. We can actually take a much smaller object, let's take a teapot, um, and place it in an orbit around the pumpkin. And it will orbit just fine. It's going to have a perfectly circular orbit although it's a little bit difficult to see, so here is a slightly better uh, color. So there you go, you have a teapot orbiting a pumpkin, and uh, this is currently uh, accelerated to about one and a half hours per second. So a single orbit around this pumpkin takes just over two and a half days at a distance, I forgot how far away this was, at a distance of about two or so meters. So in other words, um, a human being stuck in space they could technically take like a smartphone or something, extend it all the way to the end and uh, push it just a little bit. It needs to be a speed of about like a hundredth of a millimeter per second. And at that speed, it's going to assume a permanent orbit. Uh, and this is actually slightly closer to the pumpkin. It's about a meter away. And the speed here shows at one hundredth or even less than that of millimeter per second. So in other words, it's actually moving pretty slowly. If I were to do this in real time, you would actually not even see the motion. So it is moving, but just really, really slowly. So in that sense, maybe that's not really the best type of entertainment that this astronaut was looking for, but I guess it's better than nothing. And so this obviously shows you that everything uh, that has mass has gravity. Now, how much gravity is it though, in terms of at least something that we know um, in real life? We could technically compare this to Earth. At this distance, this object uh, exerts about one billionth, or actually even less than that, uh, it's one divided one by 1.5 billion uh, gravity compared to Earth. So if Earth has 9.8 meters per second square of gravity, uh, the gravity of that pumpkin person is about 6.5 times 10 to the power of minus 9 meters per second square. So it is pretty low. It's actually extremely low, but it is there nevertheless. And this, of course, implies that um, you right now are actually exerting gravity. Um, you could technically even calculate this gravity if you were in an isolated environment far away from Earth. Uh, so if you were actually in your own orbit around the sun, you could even uh, detect this and calculate it and even see effects like this. You could have your own moon. Now, 
I guess the obvious question some people might be asking right now is, so why can't I have my own moon right now? Why can't I take a smartphone and um, launch it around myself and have it orbit orbit me? And the answer to that is the hill sphere topic that I've covered in one of the previous videos, which suggests that if you have a much more massive body next to you, it sort of takes away from your ability to have moons. So if you were away from Earth, you could have a teapot moon. If you're too close to Earth, only Earth can have that moon, not you. And if Earth is too close to the Sun, then the Sun can have the moon, but neither you nor Earth will have any moons or any objects orbiting. Uh, so that's a concept that uh, I previously explained. You can check out the video, which may have showed up somewhere on top. And um, it's a really cool concept, but it also kind of makes you think about how pretty much everything in the universe, including you and your parents, your family, and maybe your loved ones, are all attracting each other, even though the strength itself is really, really weak. It's barely detectable by even the most advanced technologies we have today, but it is there. You and I right now are actually gravitational attracting each other with immensely tiny amounts, but it is there nevertheless. And that's kind of mind blowing when you really think about it. And I guess on that uh, metaphysical note, I'm going to end this video here and hopefully now you know a little bit more about your own gravity and also um, how you could potentially have your own moon if one day you get stuck in space. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Share this video with someone who loves learning about space and wants to know more about sciences as well. And come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. And maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it actually does help me a lot. YouTube has become my primary career and um, sometimes, especially during the months when the actual ad revenue is not very high, it's very difficult to have ends meet. But nevertheless, I do appreciate all of your support so far. Thank you for everything. Space out. <laughs>